right. Now let's go into PowerPoint. I think we've only got two or three PowerPoint sessions, I believe. Uh, so um, that's um, partly because we have a lot of webinars and things, so you can uh, learn a lot about um, Algeria through the webinars as well. But we thought we, we should have a little bit of an introduction in case somebody's brave enough to come to the dojo uh, just to see what Algeria is. So, um, so what is Algeria trying to do? Um, basically, whenever you look at things like um, artificial intelligence um, and many of the new technologies, they're, they're very data driven. And so you have people taking data from different environments and building something new from it. So here we've got a data scientist building um, building a new service. Um, and um, the problem is often in these environments, it's very easy to misunderstand what the data is, or maybe use data inappropriately. So from a data perspective, what a jury is trying to do is to get the knowledge about data, um, which is generally dispersed across the organization and in the heads of people that the uh, consumers are, um, are, are um, working on. Uh, I'll, you know, they don't even know one another. Um, and maybe the knowledge is in systems, maybe it's in developers' heads and things like that. And all these people are using tools and, and they are working and contributing that knowledge to their tools. Uh, so if we can connect the tools together um, and sort of create what we call the metadata highway between them, um, then um, Kali, as a data scientist, We'll know, um, and this is something. This is faith. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to. We'll be able to benefit from other people's knowledge as she's working with data. So um, the other thing is that it's all very well gathering knowledge, but we also need to make sure that we act on that knowledge. So there's a lot in Nigeria about automation, so that we can do things like mass data based on the sensitivity of it. Um, that we can push configuration to different systems. So not only are we creating a visibility across many different professions and tools and platforms and life cycles, uh, we also want to use metadata to drive the ecosystem and keep it secured, safe um, and running in the way that the organization would hope. Um, because we have been a very successful industry in that we have um, We've spent 40 plus years adding and expanding the capability of IT. And, and the, uh, the, <laughs> the innovation has been phenomenal. But what we've been left with is a very complex environment because nothing's been decommissioned really. We've just added to it. Um, and, uh, and the speed and pace has meant that um, projects have, have maybe done made short-term decisions and also the focus has been on just add another system add another system add another database and now we need to sort of try and sort that environment out um, there are regulations that require um, different domains of governance to work together so for example if you think of something as simple as simple as gdpr that combines the privacy team with the data team with the IT infrastructure team and the security team and they're used to working in their as their own governance domains but these actually all have to collaborate and these are all their own tools so really when we start to think about um, getting metadata under control we're looking at very many different professions and we're also looking at creating visibility on these very complex environments um, and helping an organization maybe simplify um, or, or at least have a better feel on what they have. Um, and, and one of the other pre, uh, misconceptions that people have about data is that it's all about facts. Um, but it doesn't take very much to think about um, what um, I think about particular types of data and you realize that the content of the data is very much determined by the context in which it was gathered. So if you imagine you're um, on a beach somewhere, long way away from home, and someone asks you where you live, you're gonna say your country, I live in the UK or whatever. Um, however, if you're standing in your street and someone asks you where you live, you're going to say, oh, I live in that house over there, you know, just on the corner. Um, and those are two collect data collections <laughs> of the same fact, but they are very different values. So the thing about metadata is it's all about gathering what we call the context of 
whether of, of the the situation in which it was gathered the question that was asked because that tells us the precision the timeliness uh, the format all those sorts of things that you need to properly interpret the value um, and um, and as I said this this is increasingly important in modern environments because um, the regulation is requiring it everyone wants to do ai everybody wants to do smart workflows and and use chatbots and all of these modern technologies as I say are very different. that's very bad i think i've got a dodgy connection to my display so uh, that's what happened there okay um so we were talking about the um about the desire to use data in in much more um much more advanced ways and of course that means that we're constantly extracting data from the different systems that um uh that that that, pr that produce the data in the first place and so that context is being stripped away and, and I sh i've got this lovely picture of a of a tortoise without its shell and that's how i feel the data is when you pull it out of its protective application um and so we've uh, um oh gone into a different order than i expect yeah and 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 the danger is that there are well, there's so many values and dangers and and and, um, and, and sort of risks around taking that data out um, that we need to be constantly balancing those those changes. Um, so uh, oops, about that. Just wonder if I'm looking at the right chart. Um, oh yes, right. So um, if we go. If, if we think about what we're trying to do with the metadata repository, uh, we're trying to as I say, gather all the information around the data and um, the things that are processing it. It's not really just about data. I mean, that was our route, but the more you look at it, you also need to, to manage information about the systems and networks, the, um, the software components, um, APIs, and uh, also uh, the processes around human processes and organizations around around the data as well. Um, and one of the um, questions we asked ourselves very early on is what is what works? Um, and something that's really dramatically approved is, is around photography, where today our cameras gather an awful lot of information about the situation that the photograph was taken in. So we know where it was, um, and what date and time it is. That means we can look at the weather, we can look at um, um, you know many many aspects of the camera settings and things like that so that we can automatically process photographs and adjust to the situation in which the um, photo was taken and align photographs on their location so we can do an awful lot more with a photograph than we could with the paper printout that relied on people writing that sort of information on the back which of course very few of us ever did so if we can do the same type of thing with um other types of data um, and have a much more broader implementation of that that encompasses the, the governance aspects, then, then it's going to be a lot easier for organizations. So Ajiria, in some respects, the, the code in Ajiria is step one to actually provide the capability. But we also want to work with vendors and open source technology teams to push that, that um, function into their products. So by default, um, um, a database uh, works um, and supports governance metadata or um, a data science tool is already already gathering and using using information from data platforms metadata and and so the use of Ageria become it actually starts to disappear as it's embedded into many different technologies and so you know and and if we if we succeed um, it will be just become something that uh, everybody uses and is not, uh, and, you, and you're not doing anything special to set up the metadata exchange. Um, the other thing is that wherever we look at manual metadata management, so here's the um, properties from a, a, a document I wrote. I know about, I know all about metadata, but I still don't fill in the properties for my documents, um, and so that metadata is worse than useless um because it's 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 so wrong uh, and so we need to guard against um we relying on people typing in various information about um you know ab ab about uh, data we really need to automate the gathering of it um so for many organizations i'm going to skip through a quick 
they use a metadata repository uh, to gather all that information. And the problem with a central metadata repository is that often it's tied to a suite of tools from a particular vendor, uh, which can be irritating for large companies that use a variety of tools. Um, a centralized repository, it's very hard for it to have all the operational characteristics for it to be a good search and document engine, as well as something that can be used 24 by seven in an operational environment. So, um, you know, by automatic processes. So, so typically you need different types of metadata repositories for the different use cases. Um, and, um, and so what we're trying to do with Egeria is to move away from the, um, you know, just use our tools, um, just use our metadata repository and take an environment which has a very scattered view of data and use Egeria in, as a peer to peer integration. So these, that each vendor's tools, each technology's metadata repository doesn't go away. Uh, Egeria just links and shares metadata that's appropriate between them. Um, and when you start thinking about it, there are a great number of tools to um, that, are, that that we need to bring together, um, and a great number of platforms. So this has to be very um, very uh, distributed, integratable, and um, able to scale up and scale down to a very large number of environments. Um, and the orange here is the metadata. So we're linking across the platforms uh, so that we can gather information on each platform. But we also need to be able to share metadata between organizations that don't want a direct line between their repositories. So we need to be able to attach metadata in a standard form that can be read by both organizations in a similar way to the photographic metadata. Um, and a few years ago, we came up with a what would what do we what needs to change in the industry, <clears throat> and this is what we call the uh, the Open Metadata Manifesto. And it talks about the fact that we have to automate to scale. We need to make metadata ubiquitous. So this is the pushing it down into all the technologies. I uh, want to make sure that wherever it is, it's um, accessible by open interfaces. Um, and we want to um, not rely on people to manually update it, date, date, date data, but as they're using tools, the metadata associated with their knowledge that's coming in and out of that tool is then brought into the open eco metadata ecosystem and made um, a part of, the, of, 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 you know, made available to other people. So we want to enhance the way people are working, not create a new set of work. So what have we built? Um, and you're going to play a lot with this uh, today. Um, this picture, in this picture, it's a very um, uh, sort of uh, high level overview picture, but the green, the green um, clouds are all the different environments. So there could be different cloud providers, there could be different um, sites, um, you know, different data centers in an organization. There could be different organizations that, that will not share infrastructure, you know, however your organization is, is managed. You, you put what the blue, the blue rectangle, which is our platform, and you're going to hear about this OMAG server platform over and over again. You put that in each of your environments. And then on top of it, you configure our virtual servers. So these are um, servers that perform an integration with a particular type of tool based on its configuration. So you'll spend time configuring different servers um, and they will be doing a particular type of integration, a particular style of integration, uh, depending on the type you choose. So those are the two main things, the OMAG server platform, which is the, 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 the process, the physical, physical server, that you, the physical um, process that you run, and then the, the uh, servers themselves, the orange circles, are all controlled through configuration. <clears throat> um, the other thing that we don't really go into so much today, it's more likely to come, come on the third day, is that um, Egeria does cover a very huge scope of metadata. Um, <clears throat> and it's designed to cross multiple life cycles, so from development through to operations. Um, as well as the sort of business life cycle and the governance life cycles as well that are all working in, in parallel. And um, when the servers are coming up, you'll see about nearly five, I think it's nearly 500 types now we have that cover the entire environment that we need. 
Um, and some of them are entities, which are sort of nodes, nuggets of information, and others are relationships that link them together. And there'll also be classifications that are um, that basically add or group different types of things together um, that are similar. So, um, <clears throat> Jira is is open. We're open source, obviously. We embrace as many open standards and common and data um, common platforms as we can to make it easy to integrate and uh, embed into different technologies. Um, it is incredibly scalable and configurable, again, to support a wide range of um, environments. And we do have a focus on automation, uh, which you'll see as, as you go through. So that's the overview presentation. Um, there are, in the deck, there are many links to extra information. <clears throat> 